Ford McLaren 570S Spider, and I'm uh, joined by Seb Delaney. Today we are sharing this car, and I thought rather than us doing an individual video, because I'm uh, no, not doing any uh, injustice or disservice to this car, yeah. but it is a 570S with the roof taken off it, which is no bad thing. But I thought because of that, I wanted to get two takes, two opinions yeah, on yeah. the format of this car, what you think about it, what we expect, exactly. etc. And uh, we've we both had the privilege of being invited on a lot of McLaren Driven events the, lately. The sports series a fair amount. Exactly. And done yeah. a fair amount of videos on them. Yeah, that's it. So I yeah. thought we're both very familiar with the format of this car. Yeah. So let's just sort of have a chat really about our first impressions of it. So anyway, we found ourselves on some uh, awesome roads, so uh, let's point these guys forwards and uh, indulge you on what this thing's like going rather brisk. ourselves on a uh, beautiful twisty mountain road uh, just outside yes just outside of Barcelona uh, it's 27 degrees outside sunny, sunny. blue skies nice sticky tarmac so it's a good place to uh, exploit this car yeah. um, first things first for me simply taking the roof off a car just adds a whole new dynamic to it now, I've spent plenty of time in a 570 in fact you and I both had was it a 540C we had, we had a when 540C, we left Geneva? We had a 540C, oh, when we drove, yeah. 540C, then a 570 GT as well. 570 GT. We also took a 570 track pack, didn't we, yeah. to yeah. Red Rock Road? Yeah, which was we did. Very, very cool. And now we find ourselves with the roof off a very similar platform. And I'm always amazed at the dynamic it brings. Yeah. Like just the joy factor. Now, for me, taking the roof off a car is nothing more than an extra level of indulgement and fun. It adds emotion. A it adds it. emotion. And that could be one of the things this car needed. Absolutely. As a well, this is it. Now, um, we've been talking a lot lately about the uh, merits of naturally aspirated cars. Yeah. That, okay, they might be a bit slower, but they add uh, more of an emotional connection to the car, mostly through sound. Now, Absolutely. the benefit of taking the roof off this, well, let's, uh, we'll show you the benefit of taking the roof off this. Exhaust. Now, and it personally, pops. it pops on if, if I time it right on the, the downshifts, which uh, annoyingly I didn't know. Yeah. <laughs> this does have a nice whip crack yeah, every yeah, now and yeah, again. Yeah, it does. Um, and with the roof off, you just get to sort of saturate more of that, you know? You get yeah. to, to experience it more. Now, I think one of the criticisms of McLarens, certainly of the past, is that they haven't like sounded that, that good. With the roof off, and yeah. one of my favorite features is even with the roof up, you could drop this little rear window here, is that uh, it just lets in so much more of that sound. Which exhaust makes and a huge difference intake. to your huge overall difference. experience. Huge difference, man. Let alone also being sort of exposed to all the elements and being in a yeah. convertible, having the wind in your hair and stuff. It just makes the whole experience a bit more enjoyable, doesn't That's it? it? On a sunny day. Yeah, exactly. Now, yeah. I spend most of my time annoyingly in England, yeah. where I'm not sure how conducive yeah. a convertible yeah. Yeah. would be. Although having said that, at the beginning of the year, I spent quite a lot of time with you in your yeah. neck of the woods. Yeah. And if I look at convertible sports cars, mm -hmm. supercars in this bracket, yeah. I mean, I'd, you'd be hard pushed to kind of look well, anywhere else. Like it's some full package. Which is, uh, as rigid still as this car, having a carbon monocoque, so, yeah, you, that's you, it. you basically haven't lost anything I in know. terms of performance, rigidity, um, handling. This car is effectively 
yeah. the 570 s with no roof exactly. you're not losing yeah. anything all you're doing is you're adding emotion and all of that stuff to it and about 10 grand but yeah. apart from that, yeah. Yeah. Apart from that it's yeah. the same thing also looking at the landscape of other cars so i was thinking you know what else would you possibly look at in this area um r8 v10 spider yeah now you're gonna have that naturally aspirated v10 which yeah. is awesome uh, but I was checking out the weight difference. Now the, the R8 V10 Spider is 200 kilograms heavier. 228 kilograms. 228. 228. Fun fact. Of fun the fact day. of the day. I mean, that, that that is no small change. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, and, and it's a big difference. It so is a big difference. And also that weight is not necessarily perfectly distributed. Not at all. It kind of affects the 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 weight distribution of the car. We've been in it a short time. Uh, Seb drove it from the hotel all the way down the motorway to the first half of this mountain road. Uh, being in it, I, I don't know why you wouldn't. If you were to, if you were ordering a new one, I don't know why you wouldn't go yeah. for the Spider. Same not to 60 time, yep. 0 0.1 of a second slower to 100. 0.1, yeah. which is Point nothing. One. And same top Forget speed it. with the roof up. Because it's is, only, yeah, exactly. what was it? I'm gonna geek out here, but it was 46 kilos yes. heavier. Yeah. Which doesn't yeah. really, that's effectively as if you had a you tiny might little passenger with you. Yeah, 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 exactly. Really, in terms of this car being the complete package, I think they've really they nailed, nailed it. it. Um, now, some people might be, be thinking of like storage space. Now, conventionally, with a convertible, you lose this shelf here. However, McLaren have done something pretty cool, uh, which kind of only applies if the roof is up, really. But yeah. where the roof folds into is quite a lot of usable space. And instead of that being an area which is just locked away, McLaren have made it an accessible, usable space where you can actually put quite a lot of stuff in it. Yeah. Um, so if you weren't planning on taking the roof down and just wanted to use it as extra space, it is actually still there. And the space in, in the front is still 570 space. It's still, and it's, which is much better than something like an R8. Yeah. Uh, now, from a personal standpoint, I don't know if this is because of the kind of cars we've spent time in over the last few weeks and months. Yeah. But this car for me is is not a sort of raw attack on the senses car. I'm finding it to be a lovely driving experience, but I'm not necessarily getting in it and thinking, Do you know what? Yeah, this is a proper supercar. It's the first yeah. time. And I don't know why. I don't. I don't. I'm not sure if it's because the roof's off or not. But it's the first time that I've understood why McLaren have classed this as a sports series car. Okay. Now that might be because lately, I've, you know, I spent and a few days in a P1 the, LM. P1 you know what LM, I mean? Yeah. And it's it's a car that's from the same brand, yeah. but is on a completely different oh, stratosphere in terms of compare. a sense of occasion. And, you know? and price. And price. And price. Yeah. I mean, yeah. let's just forget that. Yeah. yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah. Um, and again, I spent a bit more time in that truly aspirated cars, and I think at the minute that is something that, while the chats that I'm having amongst petrol heads, just the industry in general, there is a lot of sort of, you know, chat about this so turbo versus yeah. naturally aspirated market. But that being said, it doesn't mean that it can't give you that attack on the senses. I remember in Tenerife, oh, not at all. when you drove the LT, you oh left my that God. Me, like, I need that car in my life. Exactly. Which this, exactly, I guess, is not yeah. giving you. Yeah. But that's why it's the first time I'm, I am realizing where they're like, yes, this is a sports car. It's yeah. very much a sports series. Yeah. The, the numbers on paper would suggest otherwise, otherwise. Um, but I don't think it, it, it sort of, you don't arrive at those figures with the same amount of theater that you do from their super series cars. Yeah. So, yeah. And quite as quickly, like a super series car will take your breath away in terms yeah. of how fast it is. That's this it. is the type of car where you go, wow, that was very fast. It's very fast. But you're not like, but equally, to, to cruise in and live with, I mean, you know, if you were to live with this on a daily basis, oh. I would sooner oh. jump in and out of this every day oh, yeah. than the, well, than the, the first generation of Super Series. I mean, my LT, I absolutely love it, but getting in and out of that that um, Gen 1 carbon yeah, sill, yeah. which is like a basically a big carbon box that you have to step over, having them like scalloped it's away, like it is, it's so easy to get in and out of. Then combine that with taking the roof off, the car is an effortless thing. It's brilliant. Uh, one thing we didn't notice though is that with the roof off, you have no clue what's going it's on it. on the screen. Yeah. Not a clue, man. Um, I, I guess that's something they haven't been, Really, in order to get around that, they would have had to have done a fundamental interior design change. Yeah. So, well, you know, I, I get it, but equally, you have taken the roof off and it is quite hard to see, see at times, yeah. Yeah. Right, yeah. Now it's not so bad. Now it's not if bad. there's direct sunlight, sunlight behind. forget about it. Yeah. 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 Now, 
I'm interested in your thoughts on this because you okay. recently decided to take the roof off your Lotus. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So the roof could always come off. Yeah. But they tell you don't do it. Don't do it. Um, <laughs> you know, I'll take it off anyway. I was like, yeah, no, I'll do it. I'll do it. Um, and that changed the car for me. Exactly. I mean, I yeah. loved the car. Yeah. But it was a new, it was a way to give the car a new life almost. Sure. Yeah, yeah. Totally. So, you know, I knew it. I knew how it sounded. All of the experience and stuff. But also when you've got no roof, there's so much more of a sense of speed as well. Yeah, absolutely. When you're driving and you start getting all the wind rushing into the yeah. car, all this noise and stuff. So it was a way for me to sort of uh, bring that car back to life and, and loved it. And I really, really like this car, but I also don't, you know, daily drive an LT and uh -huh. 458 and stuff. So for me coming to one of an event like this, it's it's just shocking how fast this car is and just uh -huh. how capable it is. And but I completely understand where you're coming from, where it's a different um, perspective because you get yeah. to drive a lot of very special cars more often than I do. You know, coming from the Lotus, which is why I've been driving, this car is an attack on the senses. Yeah, it's yeah. Very, it's, it's just awesome. So I really like this car, I love the package. I think if you're looking for the convertible two-seater sports car to get around it, this is the, you the would, ultimate. I would imagine yeah. if you were the sort of guy to, if you wanted to look down a sort of matrix yeah, and yeah, tick yeah. the boxes of a car that does the most things, this is this would be it. This would and be compared it. to the competition, yeah. the only thing that I think one of its com competitors has over it in the R8 is the nationally aspirated yeah. engine. But That's I'd it. sooner yeah. have one of yeah. these than an R8 V10 yeah, I think so uh, Spider. Yeah, yeah, and I drove good. one of those quite yeah. a bit. And definitely, this is just a much more complete car. Yeah. It's and, so um, light. Yeah. Like, it's so dainty. Yeah. I really, really love how compact it just feels. It really shrinks around you when you're driving it. Oh, absolutely. Um, and also, it, it because it is basically a 570 and it doesn't have any of the um, the sort of handling characteristics of the GT. Yeah. I, it, it might be, you know, some people might think with the roof being off, it's approach from a, like a softer standpoint, maybe. Yeah. But so when I drove the 570 GT, for me personally, it was a little bit too soft. Okay. But interesting. This I remember is, that. is spot on. This I'm yeah, really enjoying. Yeah, there was a bit too much this. understeer. There was uh, exactly. GT, yeah. Yeah. One element I'm. Uh, I don't know if I'm surprised at, but the the wind noise, yeah. not noise, the buffeting from the interior when you're going brisk is more than I expected it it's, to be. It's 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 crazy. Actually. It's weird. Yeah, there's a yeah. lot of buffeting when we're on yeah. the motorway. It's just you know that yeah, you know when yeah. you open two windows in your car and you don't open the back ones. Yeah. And it just starts going. Yeah. You get some yeah. of that in here. Yeah. yeah. Um, which is not ideal. Say if you were if you were to order a five a five seventy S, aesthetically they look the same. You can take the roof off. That's kind of like oh, a you would just go for this. If you yeah, can, it's amazing. Go for it. So so good. Anyway, uh, we uh, have the rest of the day to enjoy this mountain range and this car. So we're gonna uh, do exactly that. Yeah. And see you next time. Thanks for watching, guys. Ciao.